Hello and welcome to the Keep It Spiritual show with myself, Chris Meredith. Now, in the first episode, I spoke to the lovely Rosalind Moody, who is the editor of Soul and Spirit magazine, and she told me everything that there is to know about the Soul and Spirit magazine, but also what it takes to bring in out such a fantastic magazine every single month. So if you've not watched that episode, go and watch it after this. I'll make sure the link is down below. Now, this episode, I'm so excited because I'm interviewing and speaking to the lovely international psychic and medium, yes, Mr. Barry John. Now, I've worked with Barry a little bit through my TV work, but I've never got the opportunity to really find out who he is and kind of, you know, why he's been so successful. And I've always wanted to ask him what it was like working on Most Haunted. So I know I'm sure you've been waiting to find out what Barry John is all about. And of course, if he's new to you, I'm sure you will love him after this this. So here is international psychic and medium, the lovely Barry John. Barry John, welcome to the Keep It Spiritual show. I've got to say thank you very much. And how does it feel to be on the show finally? Oh, do you know, I mean, eventually, eventually we've got there, Chris. But you know what? It's it's a pleasure and it's a privilege, not number, not only to, to support the show, but to support you as well. Our class is a, as a very dear friend after knowing you for a while, you know. And I think it's nice that we can actually have a very friendly sort of chat. Um, about a topic that topic that's very precious to my heart. It is, and we can actually talk about it as well, which I absolutely love. I can find <laughs> out more about you, Barry John, and of course, you know, the viewers and the listeners can as well. So you know, Barry, yourself, you know, you're a multi-award winning TV medium. Of course, you know, you're a paranormal investigator, you're a presenter, you're a broadcaster. You know, you've got a lot of strings to your bow, Barry. Is there anything that you don't do? No. <laughs> do you know i just love it you know over the years what happens you know you get so involved and you see people people come to me at events and go i want to be like you and i'll go do you know what do you know how long it's took me to get where i am now i mean it's took me nearly 30 years to get where i am or over 30 years you know around that marker um and it isn't easy you know i mean i've i i remember battling for years to try and be recognized to be known in the market you know in terms of what you do and everything and once you do get recognized it moves you into a different field you know and people do respect you you know they look at you so so different at times um but i think i'm one of these you know i like to dabble my hand in anything i want you know and i'll have a go mm. and i'll think mm, i like that you know let's have a go with it you know i mean i i'm a reiki master and i don't use that anymore you know but it's all those sort of add-on things that suddenly you start learning um, and it brings you into different fields, you know, but I've got to say, you know, the TV, the radio, the media side is the thing that I absolutely love. And I adore it because I just love chatting to people. I mean, I'm a proper talker like you, Chris, you know, <laughs> but I just love talking to people and chatting away and giving them that that wealth of knowledge and experience. And as I've always said to anybody, you know, I will help anybody in the market, you know, to to promote themselves, get themselves out or to become aware of it. Definitely. So yourself, Barry, can you first remember when you started, you know, to connect with spirit? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's very weird and I've never been fearful of spirit. What I've always been fearful of is the unknown, you know, because we are dabbling with the unknown at the end of the day. But I remember being a child, you know, when you used to lay on the bed and I used to see visions going past the window or weird sort of things dropping out the sky I don't know how to say it to you you know and I used to think what's all that you know what's that all about and I used to think I was daydreaming but you see as a child I always had this great ability to be able to daydream very quickly you know and I used to wander off into my own little world you know and start thinking about things but you know from, from so really from being a child I remember things you know experiences now I remember once being sat on the telephone talking to a family member um, and feeling a hand on my shoulder, you know, coming down the stairs. And then I spun round and nobody was there. You know, weird things like that. So, you know, there is circumstances, what have certainly happened to me over time, that even I can't explain. You know, I remember my grandmother when she passed. And I was a little bit older. I was around about probably 15, 16 when my grand passed. Um, and I remember, you know, she came to me very clear one night, woke me up, you know, sat at the edge of the bed. And all I remember seeing was this big wall of white and my grand coming towards me. And I even moved things off the bed so she could sit and talk to me, you know. And 
the next day, unfortunately, we had to put one of our dogs to sleep. And I always said, you know what, that was the reason she came back. She came back almost to let me know that she was collecting him in a way. Um, and it was just very spooky, really, on how it happened. But I think all of us, not just me, all of us have experiences on a daily basis that we can't explain or we don't know where exactly it's come from, let's say that. And do we ever know where it's come from? I don't think we do. You know, as I always say to people when I'm teaching, there are things that I get or that I pick up and I think I still have no idea where that's come from. And I just go with it, you know, and I think you have to do sometimes. And, you know, we have to separate this um, psychic ability from the clairvoyant mediumistic ability because there's two very different things there. So you mentioned that that's my next question back <laughs> there, Barry. So what is the difference between you know, your psychic abilities and your mediastic abilities? Well, the, the first thing is with the psychic ability, you know, all we're doing is linking into the individual and all we're doing is looking at what's going on around you now, you know. So we're looking at how your aura feels, how your energy feels. You know, that could be somebody coming up to you and going, oh, you feel a bit tired at the moment. You know, you're doing too much, you know, that sort of scenario. So you're not linking in, you're not connecting in any sort of way. Um, but when we start talking of clairvoyance or mediumistic, you, you're starting to get a link from the other side. You know, you're connecting on a spiritual level or a spirit level where suddenly we start proving life after death. So I think for anybody who's watching us, the first thing I would say is, you know, proving life after death is the clairvoyant mediumistic part. Some people will come to you and just want an element of guidance or an element of, um, let's call it assistance in the life. Um, and that's the psychic link, really, that says, actually, you know, I think this is going to happen to you or I know this is going to happen to you. But when we start talking of proof of life after death, obviously, we get evidence there of survival. And that's it. It is about the evidence, isn't Very it? Very much, yeah. And then so within that, Barry, yourself, you know, your mediumship has been passed down in your family. So, you know, you're a natural medium. So is, is that any different, really, you know, from someone that's just training right now? Because, of course, yours is, is from naturally from your family, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, mine goes back all through my mother's side of the family, you know, and they were always they always made me aware of things. You know, they were always there. And my mum used to talk to me of some fantastic stories. And it's my mum's birthday today, actually. You know, she would have oh. been 81 today. So she's very much in our thoughts today. Oh, um, but, um, you know, I was I was privileged in a way, you know, because they never made me fear spirit. They always encouraged it for me. Um, but anybody who's developing, you know, and you know that I run courses not only in this country, all over the world mm. to help people develop their ability. And the one thing I will say is that anybody can do this. This isn't this isn't anything special. You know, I don't agree with it when people call it a gift. I think it's an ability that some of us develop it early. Some of us develop it a bit later on in life. Sometimes you need to have an element of what I refer to as trauma or a, a difficult period in your life where it suddenly wakens you up and it heightens the senses. Um, and that doesn't always have to be that you've lost a member of family. It doesn't have to be due to death. It could just be, you know what, you just have a, a very difficult, um, let's say, mental health period in your life, you know, where maybe you go through a state of depression and you go through a little bit of solitude and suddenly you start awakening yourself. You know, those senses start being heightened. So anybody can do this. I train people all the time. I, I've run workshops now for, gosh, probably nearly 20 years where I help people develop that ability. Oh, it's good. And that's the thing, you know, it's all about raising the awareness of mm -hmm. the ability that everyone has got it. So if there's any viewers, you know, our listeners out there right now that are looking to develop, Barry, you know, so where's the best place to start? Really? Do you know what? This is a brilliant question and it's a very hard one because... I know what it's like when people want to find a group, you know, a lot of the groups you'll find can be a little bit clicky. You know, my first advice to anybody is, you know, go to your local spiritualist church, you know, doesn't have to be, um, you know, a big well-known one. There's lots of little ones. Go there, see how you feel, see if it works for you, because some people might go and go, actually, it scares me too much. If it scares you, it's not for you. But, you know, try your local church see what groups they've got, see what sort of things they're involved with, because they'll always know of a group set up or somebody developing a group. Um, and once you get into that circle, you'll start to develop in your own little group. You know, people will invite you along to an evening, you know, and I remember years and years and years ago, and I'm talking, again, over 20 years ago, when I was um, part of the spiritualist church, and people you say, oh, come back, we'll do some table tipping tonight, you know, come back and we'll, we'll, we'll do a few readings between us all. And that's what happens, you know, but yet, you know, as you develop, 
I always call it, you almost get a greed for it. You want more, you want to learn more, you want to develop more. Um, you know, and you end up going down so many pathways, you don't just stop at learning how to use your mediumistic ability. Yeah, which you've done, Barry, you know, which is mm. for you, which you've done within that. So, you know, a lot of people, Barry John, will say, you know, you're kind of mediumship royalty, you know, having worked <laughs> with the late David Kapoor and, of course, you know, the lovely yes. Colin Fry. I mean, yes. what was it like working with those? Oh, fantastic. You know, I mean, Colin, Colin and Derek, both of them were very, very good friends of mine for, gosh, in excess of 20 years, really, thinking about it. You know, I mean, I remember Colin before he even became, like, famous, you know, um, and people always used to say, you know, why won't you work with Colin? And I always used to say, do you know what? Because he's better than me. Um, and I remember, you know, during the end, you know, when Colin was very ill, you know, it was around around about sort of 2003, four. He was really ill, you know, when he started developing his cancer. Um, and he'd, he'd set me up, actually. He always used to say to me if he was local, he used to ring me up and say, come along to a show. And I remember he'd come to Retford, which is not far from me. It's about half an hour. And he said, um, he rang me up and he says, oh, you are coming tonight, aren't you? And I said, oh, yeah, 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 we're coming. He said, oh, good, I've got you some tickets. So, the, you know, behind the, the, the box office, you know, just ask for them and you'll get in. So I turned up and then as soon as I got there, I got a message to go and see Colin in his dressing room, which was always the thing that he liked, you know, to have a bit of a banter and a bit of fun. Um, and then literally he just threw it out at me and he said, so which half of the show are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, I can't do a full show now, as you know. Um, I want you to do half the show. And I, and I think I ended up doing the first half, if I remember for him now. Oh, and wow. that was really where it started, you know, with Colin. And then, obviously, then he told me then he, he wasn't well. Um, and then he asked me to support him on his tour for the last sort of two years. And, you know, it was a privilege and an honour because not only was it Colin Fry, it was actually my friend, you know, who I was helping through a very, very tough circumstance. And Derek, you know, what more can I say about Derek? You know, Derek, for me... I, I, you know, I stand my ground, you know, people who um, talk to me about Derek and I go, you know, if it wasn't for Derek, we wouldn't have the the paranormal market that we've got nowadays. You know, he, he, he highlighted it for people, you know, he opened up that doorway and people must remember that, you know, these people in their industry and I can go back years, you know, I can go back to people like Doris Stokes that awoke it up, you know, and Doris, a huge, huge, I, I love watching Doris work when I was younger, you know, even as a child, I used to think, Oh, she's amazing how does she do that you know and she was one of my big sort of aspirations really you know she was a lady that I wanted to be like you know um <clears throat> and there's lots of them over time who have really really made a huge difference you know people like Tony Stockwell you know lots of them who I fully fully support and you know we all go through a very very hard um hard industry let me say you know there's always a lot of criticism there's a lot of um skeptical criticism as well um and i don't think we're ever going to get that we're going to get round that we're never going to stop that but you know as i say you know jumping back to your question i was honored and privileged to work with two of the greatest people i've ever known i really was oh i love it to hear about it really really is and then also as well you know some people might know you from of course most haunted you was on yeah. season 10 i mean i oh, didn't yeah. even know that when i worked with you a couple of times i was like he's on most haunted Why you, i don't know that but you know that's great to hear that he was on that and of course what was it like working on most haunted oh brilliant you know i mean do you realize that is over um oh gosh that's that's nearly 12 years ago now when i was on wow. most haunted but I've known the team before that, you know, I'd always I'd always known of them and we'd done things behind the scenes with them. Um, and it was great, you know, great fun. We had some really, really good laughs, you know, and, and I've got to say, you know, it, it really did show me a different side of the paranormal, which was good. You know, I enjoyed it. But, you know, it was it was a very difficult thing to do. I remember, you know, you, you never got told where you were going to be. You just got told this is your hotel, turn up. And that was it. And then suddenly, you know, you get a phone call saying, oh, we're coming to fetch you now. And then they come and fetch you. And you still had no idea where you were going. You know, people used to say to me, oh, you do know, you do know. I used to go, honestly, I knew nothing. You know, and even if you'd have gone on to, I don't know, Google Maps and looked at where your hotel was and started to look at all these places around you, you'd be wrong. Because yeah. there were so, so many. There really was, you know, and, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was good fun. <laughs> good show. I used to love it back in the day as well. It used yeah. to Oh, especially the live ones on Halloween and things like that. It used to be scary. Yeah, like, yeah. It used to be scary. Good times. Yeah. Good 
times. Well, you know, you personally know you offer private readings, you offer group readings, and of course, you know, psychic parties as well, which I want to come to. What <laughs> is a reading like with you, Barry? Well, do you know, I mean, I always say to people, you know, you come to me because you want honesty. You know, I don't flower up a reading and I don't I don't make it pretty. You know, if I think there's something that you need to know, I'll tell you. Um, you know, there's obviously certain things where I am very cautious about. But, you know, I think I'm open. I'm honest. I have a sense of humour. I love working with a sense of humour, especially when I do larger stage shows, you know, where people... Um, People very much, you've got, to, you've got to almost include everybody in it. You know, you've got to play this huge part of everybody being part of it. So I would just say to people, come to me if you want an honest reading and I'll be honest with you. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, is yeah. the honesty right there. And you mentioned when we were talking about Most Haunted, you know, you are a paranormal investigator as yeah. well as everything yeah. else. I yeah. mean, so what's it like when you go and investigate, you know, these amazing oh. places? I love them. I love them. I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, you know, you know, you know, I'm a tour guide at Newstead Abbey, you know, and I love the venue, you know, the home of Lord Byron, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I walk around there and I open up the house. I unlock the house at the end. Of, uh, I lock it up at the end of the day. Have I had things happen? Yes, I have. You know, even I've picked things up, even even me, you know, just going in as, a, as, as you know, to open up mm -hmm. and you smell things, you sense things. And um, I think a lot of buildings hold... Um, a lot of energy, you know, almost like trapped energy where something's happened. And for me, it's being able to take people in and for them to experience it, not all about me. And I always say that whenever I do a ghost hunt nowadays or a paranormal event, I'll always say, this is your event, not mine. You know, I'm only here to assist you to get something out of it. I'm not here to do the job for you. Um, but I love it. You know, I mean, I've done in excess of 5,000 ghost hunts now over the years. Wow. Um, yeah, a lot of ghost hunts, you know, and, and I've really the tried to... Light. Here he is again, here he is. Do. Yeah, they must do, especially when I go back to the same venue. It must be like, oh, I'll put the kettle on and we'll have another chat with him, you know, because it doesn't change in a way. But, you know, I love it. I do love that, that ghosty feeling, you know, and I love people experiencing things that we can't explain. Yeah, really cool, really cool, Barry. So what do you love most about working with Spirit every day? I think for me, it's it's having that comfort and sharing that unconditional love with them. You know, I know that they're always there. I know there's times when I throw a Mardi attack, you know, which I know you'll find very difficult to understand. But yeah, <laughs> I do do that sometimes. I, yeah, I do do that sometimes. You know, I'm the worst person in the world because I do get to the point where I just think, you know what, I've really had enough today. And they must, they must be upstairs going, oh, he's off on one again. Here he goes, you know. And then in the end, I always come back down and I go, right, I'm all right now. I've calmed down now, you know. Give him I'm a minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a typical Aries. I'm a typical Aries. I have to be, you know. Um, oh. and, it's, and for me, it, it is. It's about having that comfort. But also, it's about bringing people that comfort as well. Oh. When people come to me, for a genuine reading. I'm not talking about somebody that comes for a psychic reading, but somebody comes to me out of the fact that they've lost somebody and all they want to do is to hear from them and let them know that they're okay. That's what really makes it for me on a daily basis. That was a lovely Barry John right there. And what a guy he is. And of course, you know, he is so popular as well. So if you'd like to know anything more about Barry John, in the description down below is his link and go and check him out. And of course, with the Keep It Spiritual platform, we do have a podcast as well. Over five episodes out right now, out to a worldwide audience as well. You can get the Keep It Spiritual podcast wherever you get your podcast. So we've had episodes on Wicca, Fairies, most recently International Psychic, the lovely Inbal as well. So the link is down below as well for that. Now in the next episode I talk to the beautiful author which is Beverly Densham. Now she has just wrote and released I Talk to Angels, a fantastic book if you're looking to connect with your guardian angels or find out what angels are all about. So make sure you watch out for that video. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe straight away so you don't miss a video and follow me on Twitter at, at Chris C. Meredith and make sure you follow the Keep It Spiritual platform at Keep It Spirit Pod. We're available as well as a podcast. The links are down below for everything. So thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure and always remember, keep it spiritual. Until next time, see you later.